Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Irv Rish, and we're moving right along with our study in the book of 1 Peter. And we're actually, uh, today we are going to be starting uh, the last chapter. Uh, and we're going to be starting chapter 5 of 1 Peter. And we're going to be on part 1 uh, in this uh, broadcast, so... With that said, let us just jump into the scripture here. Okay, as we come to the end of this letter, we have some very important truths conveyed to us by the Apostle Peter. He says, therefore, you know, after reading the first uh, four chapters, he's saying, therefore, I urge you, elders among you, as your fellow elders and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and one who is also a fellow partaker of the glory that is to be revealed. You know, I've been a Christian now for 40-some years, and uh, I actually uh, have been an elder for many years. And I'm actually an elder elder. I'm the older of the elders, and... uh, uh, I know that my time on earth here is short, and but I'm, I've been so blessed to be able to uh, be called to uh, tend to the flock of God uh, in my duties. And uh, I just pray that I have done uh, a job worthy uh, of this position. Well, Keith goes on to say in this portion, there are two words translated elder in the New Testament, and it is instructive in, uh, that we observe when and how each one is used. The first, and he's talking in the Greek here, which I cannot read, uh, about which I quote from the the, the uh, yeah Wapidika, that that. Uh, thing on online, uh, and he talks about ismology, uh, borrowed from the the Greek, the ancient Greek, and he mentions it as overseer, uh, watcher, look out for a guardian. Uh, it means all of those things. This was an office in the early church, and they were appointed by the apostles or by their delegates, like Timothy and Titus. They are also spoken of as in the plural. That is, there were multiple men in the office in each location, and their responsibility was restricted to the locality. They were living in, or they lived. Paul gave Timothy and Titus a strict... uh, prescription of conduct for the appointing of such men. We have five elders in our group of believers in our fellowship. And I mean this difference. At one time we were only a couple and then there was three, then there was four. And now we're up to five as we were growing. God has been adding to this office. Uh, There is a second word translated elders used more frequently, particularly in the latter uh, uh, apocalypse letters, uh, the uh, you know the letters of the apostles, and uh, Paul and John and Peter also refer to them by this term, and it is also a word used by James when he tells the sick to call for the elders of the church to pray over them. This would be. Uh, Respirator, uh, and again, it's quoted. What it is? What is it? The meaning of this word? Well, presbyter, if I'm pronouncing it right, is formed formed from the root word prespus. This word has a general meaning of old man or old person, natural uh, dignity of age more advanced in age, implying dignity and wisdom, an ambassador, 
elder or Jewish Christian, Sanhedrin or church, assembly of elders. Okay? Today in the church, no uh, sober-minded man would claim to have been appointed to the position by an authoritarian hand handed down from the apostles. Of course, both Roman Catholic churches and uh, Eastern Orthodox Church both make this claim. However, the Lord has given his provision for the church to function despite our divided state and variance and sundron subgroups. You know, Peter appeals is to those older men who care for the God's flock, and it is based on his also being an old man who cares deeply for the Lord's sheep. He also presents his credentials, not of uh, uh, apostolic authority, but as an eyewitness of the sufferings of Christ and of his glory, which he observes with James and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. It is not that Peter wasn't an apostle. The testimony of Scripture is plain on this, but that was not uh, the basis of his appeal here. Well, before moving on, I just want to talk to you about elders a little bit. I believe that uh, mature Christians in the church should be leading the immature Christians in the church. And uh, these mature Christians should be recognized by the body of believers that they are capable of looking out for the flock. So in that sense, we do have elders in the church, uh, but not appointed really by man, uh, but appointed by God because of the Spirit of God that is within us. People can see when a person is walking with the Lord, reading his word, having fellowship with him, and uh, uh, being a fellow uh, shepherd, under shepherds, if I could use the word, under shepherds of Christ. You know, Christ has looked out for the body, the church, uh, by doing this. And I firmly believe that there are elders within the churches uh, the local assemblies, let me put it that way. But I don't believe that you go to school and you learn all this and learn that. It is spiritual men who have led the flock. So the scripture goes on to say, shepherds, shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God and not with greed, but with eagerness, not yet as dominating over those assigned to your care, but by proving to be an example to the flock. Boy, this spells the whole thing out right there. Let's pick this apart a little and see what we find. Peter tells them to shepherd the flock of God among them. Not those under you, but those among you. There isn't a hint of domination, but of care according to the will of God. The training for this position is a life lived in the care of God through trials, failures, conflicts, and lessons. It is not obtained by a graduate, graduating Christian leadership training or any of that stuff. It is not a measure of preaching uh, gift or leading studies. It is not for the most forceful personalities, but for the most broken who have learned not to lean on their own strength, but to draw on the resources of grace. That's why I believe elders should pray all the time. They are to be led first and foremost by example. Let me ask you a question. If you found yourself in the company of men heading into a fierce battle, who would you prefer to be led by? A young man fresh out of West Point 
or a grizzly old veteran who has come through many a battle, perhaps with a few scars to show forth in. You know, there is no uh, acceleration uh, office training 90-day wonders in God's army. There isn't. It comes from a long life of uh, hardship and following the Lord. There is also a warning here against serving uh, re reluctantly out of greed. In other words, doing it for a profit. Uh, you know, as long as I've been an elder, I never wanted to take money for that office because it's I do it out of love, not out of uh, a means of support. The whole church feels the disgrace brought by men who assume leadership in God's house, spoiling goodness to be gained. You know, how many people uh, led Christians, uh, congregation, build their portfolio, uh, and perhaps for retirement, a hireling will flee and forsake the flock as the Lord said, because he is a hireling. The love of Christ and his sheep must be the only motivation. And, and that's what leadership is all about. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive an unfading crown of glory. The Lord Jesus Christ is the good shepherd, and that is what pastors mean. And the reward for serving as under shepherds will come at his appearing. It will not be in stocks and bonds and 401ks, but an unfading crown of glory. He is the chief shepherd and will we all serve at his pleasure in whatever role he has assigned to us. You younger men, likewise, be subject to your elders. Peter had a word for the leaders and now he speaks to those of us who are followers. You young men, be subjected to your elders. A heart that is right with God will be pliable and eager to learn. We are to recognize those God that recognize those God has placed in leadership roles and submit to them. Why make it hard for them to carry out their responsibilities? This doesn't suggest blind submission to the whims of an older man, but as they are appointed of the Lord, we are to follow their faith and advice. Everything must be put to the test of God's word. And may leaders told, uh, my leaders told me to do this or that will hold no water at the judgment seat of Christ. But in the you know, general course of Christian life, God will manifest those who have uh, true shepherds among his flock, and they are to submit to. Well, a solemn lesson is found in the story of King Solomon's son, Rehoboam. It said he forsook the counsel of the older men and hearkened unto the young men who were brought up with him. This led to a division of the nation of Israel between the northern and southern tribes that continued until today. And all of you, this is scripture again, and all of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God is opposed to the proud, but he has given grace to the humble. So in closing, both old and young are to submit to one another with humility. Plain and simple, God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. So with that said, I'm going to end my podcast again like usual. God is out here and you can find him in your Bible. Just pick it up and read it. Well, with that said, goodbye for now. Lord bless you.